Recording in progress. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Fakadu from Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia. One of your classmates in this class, uh, uh, the leadership and motivation. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Suzanne. And thank you very much for my uh, group members, those who have been involved in the uh, virtual discussion board. I really learned it from you. So I'd like to thank you all, also my classmates, and thank you for uh, watching my video for this presentation about uh, what motivates college students in the US to use social media. Before I uh, discuss about the, the project, I would like to reflect on how this course has been going. And I'm really very happy. And uh, yeah, the course gave me a very different uh, inspiration, a different way of looking at things that we are doing, including myself, why am I joining this PhD program and what I want to achieve in my life, what I'm, why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, including the non-profit program. I just mentioned the Youth and Education Support Service mission. So thank you very much, Dr. Suzanne, for a very flexible and really adult education approach. So I'd like to mention that. So my, my project, uh, which I'm presenting about, is, as you see, is dealing with what motivates college students in the US to use social media. So uh, why social media? Uh, of course, as you know, more than 4.5 billion people globally are using social media these days. And even in the United States, there are about 300 million people using social media and the United States is the third country in the world next to China and India uh, by having the biggest number of people using the social media in different forms. And almost all college students in US, they use social media directly or indirectly, uh, one or more platforms. So I've also been using social media a lot for my career. Uh, starting from the time I get my first scholarship to study in Denmark, that was before 10 years. And that program was uh, realized only after uh, coming across a post which my friend shared on Facebook. Then from that time, I started searching for University of Copenhagen in Denmark, and then I got a scholarship. So I give credit uh, to all my uh, career so far is because of the uh, social media and the internet technology. So I'm really uh, happy and grateful for the people that made this technology available. So I've been using the technology. For me, social media is a very big issue. So it's not just something I use just to connect with people or just to see news updates, but I use it a lot for uh, promoting education, you know, supporting the voiceless and helping people who are going through different challenges. So yeah, there is one very funny or surprising statistics about how much all of us are touching our mobile phones. As you know, we scroll every day. So an average person is scrolling or touching mobile phones more than 2,600 times per day. And this is from a published paper. And I'm happy to share with you if you'd like to read more. And it's very clear that this is a very addictive uh, platform. So social media is not just something that we use intentionally for a lot of people, especially for young people. This is a very addictive uh, uh, something happening in their life. So um, me, as you see, with this beautiful T-shirt that I love and care about, right now also I'm wearing the same T-shirt you might see here. So the name is being modified now, Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia. Yes, Ethiopia is going to be Youth and Education Support Service Global, and it's going to be registered here in the United States. And funny is that, you know, even the color of the T-shirt is also in line with my, this colorful <laughs> hair. So, the, yeah, coming back to the motivation, as I said, social media is very big. For me, I use it a lot for my nonprofit, for my own career. And I also think it's a very amazing technology that we should really value and use. 
So if you see my social media, uh, LinkedIn, for example, I have almost 34,000 followers. So I do a lot of things on LinkedIn. I also engage a lot on Facebook. These days, even I'm on TikTok. So I'm everywhere on social media because I have an agenda that I want to promote. I'm also influencing to my level best. So I'm part of the blame and I'm part of the, uh, you know, the story of social media. So it's a very big business in my career. So why college students? Even if I'm passionate about using technology to support career of use, my interest in studying social media reached its highest after a recent let's go or Benhed Shalan Ali Namharik. You know, a lot of uh, students after 96% of grade 12 students in Ethiopia failed to pass the in national entrance exam, university entrance exam. There was a hashtag on TikTok and a lot of social media posts, including Instagram, where a very popular social media activist who failed an exam, she said, let's go. In Amharic, it means which means let's commit suicide, let's die, or that kind of thing. And a lot of people, a lot of young people died because of this hashtag, because of this, um, you know, influence. And my interest to study and become more aware of social media become very big, especially after this sad and very horrible uh, things that happened the hashtag from this popular social media activist. So in addition, since I've been a teacher for a long time, higher education is my number one agenda. In the sector I know the most, it's where I have been working. And my little knowledge about this world is more or less related to higher education and the education sector. So uh, in addition to our nonprofit, Ethiopia is also a fully, uh, virtual organization. So this is an organization registered in Ethiopia, which has been uh, operating for the last four years. And it's one of the major reasons why I come to this PhD leadership studies. Even if I have a major in nutrition and agriculture, nowadays I'm becoming more and more interested about how people use technology and how people improve their career and their uh, workplace in general. So <clears throat> I'm also promoting the use of social media uh, and especially by society. I advocate for effective use of social media. So that's why I focus on college students. That's my biggest motivation. Where my biggest motivation comes from is the motivation to impact positively. It's the motivation to help people and it's a motivation to be voice for the voiceless. So I care about my people. I care about the young people, especially I care about for students. I'm a teacher. And I care about my students. And uh, what I see from the literature, however, uh, I was unclear about what motivates my students to use social media. And it's also not clear in, on the literature. Thanks to this course, uh, 877 Leadership and Motivation made me think again about motivation, especially the social media, which I'm presenting in this. So what did we do? I did. A scoping review. I conducted a review. A scoping review of was conducted to ex explore the available recent evidences about motivation of college students to use social media. So after searching for published studies from the last five years, uh, I came with summary of the literature. The search keywords I used were social media, motivation, uh, United States, and students. I obtained about 20 papers from UNL libraries database. I also tried to search more from uh, Google Scholar and other journals, but I couldn't find exactly papers dealing with college students and social media motivation. So I summarized, I summarized the key findings and related the findings with the theories of motivation. Then I added my own reflections and recommendations. So what did we find? What we found is that uh, use are using social media for the following major aims or reasons. The first thing is to stay connected with their peers. 
their families and their friends. We not their connectedness, being connected to their uh, closest people. And the second is to get informed about their jobs, their career, and their study. Still, there are a lot of young people searching the internet from uh, YouTube to other uh, common social media pages where people try to answer questions, where job or scholarships are posted, where uh, trainings are posted, or where uh, people post educational videos and information. Still, it's interesting how social media is becoming a platform for relationships, love, even uh, going to the level of marriage and starting a family. So social media is not just where people meet and laugh and go, but even people engage in meaningful relationships, people exchange, you know, love and relationship, and then at the end of the day, they get married. And of course, there are lots, also a lot of activism, social activism, political activism ongoing. There are a lot of ideological issues, there are a lot of debates, and there are a lot of uh, influence ongoing. So social media is not just a place to get connected. There's also a lot of uh, place to influence each other and to dominate public attention. If we see from economic side, social media have been used for promotion, marketing, sales, and fashion, music industry, art, and all these kind of things, including technology. Nowadays, there are a lot of creative young people you know, presenting their talents and their skill on social media. If you go and see TikToks and if you go and see Instagram and Facebook, there are a lot of uh, sports and athletics and fashion and you know music and drawing and a lot of creative ideas are being used on social media. And there is a way to influence. There is a reason to be on social media. People try to influence and try to market their ideas and their products and their services. So. Of course, there are people who are just on social media to laugh and to relax and to be happy and to just have nice time online. And the other story is not just happy story. There are people who have mental health issues, people who have addictions, people who are too much addicted to games and gambling. Of course, even crimes such as uh, hacking at, uh, accounts of people. And there are who people who attack each other in different ways, who abuse and yeah, do a lot of things, bullying and this kind of things, especially among the youngest people. And of course, there are a lot of passive users of social media. As I said earlier, we touch our phones for more than 2,600 times per day. But most of this touching and engaging, scrolling, it's phones and social media is not as such intentional or active. A lot of them are passive users, or it's what algorithm is doing. It's more on the deep and technology or engineering side of social media because it brings things that are in line with what you're looking for. I'll give you an example. For example, if a student is watching a video of, let's say, um, relationships, or healthy relationships. The algorithm brings a lot of stories which speak about healthy relationships. If one starts by looking at a sad story, crime, or uh, let's say uh, unhealthy relationships, divorce, or this kind of things, then the algorithm brings a lot of those kind of stories so that the person is still keeping and staying online as long as possible. So there is a very big issue in relation to the algorithm and mental health issues of the young people. There are a lot of unconscious biases, which is also related to dopamine and the hormone of uh, you know our motivation and all these kind of things. So yeah, thanks to this course and also other courses. This review informed me a lot about social media. I learned a lot from this process. I really thank you, Dr. Suzanne, and uh, I also thank other instructors because I'm using this uh, opportunity even to engage in more uh, review activities. And also I'm thinking to publish this uh, research scoping review even after we finish this class. So yeah, this has been really a very informative process. 
and uh, but let's link the findings with the theories of motivation from this class. Almost all of the evidence, uh, even if all of the evidence doesn't directly link uh, with the theories of motivation, you know, but there are ways we can connect, we can interpret. As I said, a lot of people study uh, social media related issues, but they don't directly mention motivation, especially in relation to the theories. You don't see most of the theories we learn in this class clearly mentioned in the published paper. So I did do my best to relate this findings with the theories. I might not be correct. So I just mentioned this. I give a hint based on my level of understanding of the theories. And the research is a bit difficult. I need to have more time researching and studying and knowing more about uh, motivation theories and also applying them in a research environment before I confidently say this means this in terms of motivation and the like. But given how much we know so far, I try to make my own kind of conclusion correlations. So let's say there are a lot of people, a lot of young people who are on social media just to get in connected with their peers, with their friends, with their families, to get information about jobs, about career, and seeking for relationship, love, and marriage. So I put all this together, and then connecting this to our leadership, I mean, with the theories of motivation. These are closely linked with the competencies and relatedness element in self-determination theory. As you know, self-determination theory speaks about autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And competency in this context is just be, being eagerness to seek information, to seek knowledge, and to enrich one's understanding of the subjects they are interested about. And the relatedness element, the way I understand it, is all about feeling connected and being part of a community, and also seeking relationships, love, and marriage. That's also clearly related with the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, especially love and affection. And seeking for jobs and for study and you know, career, of course, is about basic needs. There are a lot of young people looking for jobs. Speaking from my own experience from Yesitopia, I know a lot of young people come to the Yesitopia platform is looking for jobs. They are looking for ways to survive, you know? They are looking for ways to help themselves. So they are looking for ways to get income. So I can relate this to just clearly to the self-determination and the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In addition, the McKellan's, Mark McKellan's Iman motivation theory of basic needs. As you know, the three main driving motivator, motivators of human beings are the need for achievement, affiliation, and power. In this context, when someone is looking for information, looking for career, and looking for the chance to grow and to study, I think this is a motivation to achieve something, motivation to grow academically, you know? And, uh, Again, when we see the motivation to influence others, especially for the political activism, the ideological uh, agendas, uh, promotion and uh, marketing and sales and fashion, there is a lot of influence here. People try to influence others, people trying to gain attention, people trying to sell their ideas in one way or another. So this goes just beyond, uh, you know, basic needs. It's all about uh, applying of power and it's being about connected to the society, being affiliated to a given group. And still this is in line with the academic theory of McKillan's Mac <laughs> theory of academic human needs and human theories of motivation. And the influence element is also very, very big. It's also part of the social cognition theory of Bandura. I hope I'm correct about the citation there. And it's about how people trying to influence and be influenced by their social environment. So people try to influence in the meantime also be part of an environment where they are directly or indirectly influenced or attracted to a given agenda because they belong to that group, the social cognition theory. So yeah, so, so far we have the uh, self-determination theory, the, the theories of basic needs of uh, Maslow's hierarchy, and also the theory of occurred needs, 
Ms. McMillan, McKillan, sorry, I couldn't pronounce his name correctly. And then the Bandura's theory of social cognitive theory. Looking for happiness and fun, and also uh, the mental health issues. Oh, these are really like one of the topics which have been researched a lot. There are a lot of research conducted, especially in relation to mental health and social media use, addiction, or especially those who face challenges, and also those who are passive consumers, and those who go through unconscious biases, and also those who attack each others. I could relate this to the self-regulation theory in general. It's all about people being intentional and being clear and managing themselves and, uh, you know, their behavior. So the mental health issue is not just something really like a study from, I mean, a result from one study. There have been, I think, more than half of the papers I have seen in one way or another are related to mental health issues and ways to help young people uh, have a better, you know, um, uh, yeah, emotions and this kind of things. So again, linking these findings with the theories of motivation, the people looking for fun and happiness and mental health. This is a very clear issues uh, about self-regulation. I think this helps a lot. I think the self-regulation theory, this can also be kind of related to tra uh, training or other interventions, uh, how we can help young people so that they uh, manage their time and they manage their fun. What's fun in this context or what is happiness in this context might not be really as such a very uh, constructive way of engaging. I've seen from uh, the papers that people sometimes make fun of each other, uh, make fun of other pictures, others uh, in a way of appearing, I mean, like, in general, fun or happiness might not be really well thought about. So that's why I put uh, the point of having fun, mental health, addiction, games, gambling, attacking others, hacking accounts, uh, also the passive users. All these are related to self-regulation. And yeah. Then, again, linking these findings with the theories of motivation, What's been clearly associated, especially in relation to Instagram, how young uh, women, especially girls, are using, uh, let's say, Instagram, posting their pictures and the like, and how uh, young uh, people try to be part of their uh, society and their peers is all about mattering and feeling valued or being loved, was found to be significantly correlated with adolescents' distress, online activity, problematic problematic social media usage, uh, you know, connectedness. All these things are really, really very important topics. And I think the all the theories that connect with, you know, feeling part of a community, feeling part of a group, and also influence comes within the mattering and feeling valued part. There's a strategies to improve adolescents' mental health. You should consider the way they use see themselves in terms of their social groups. It's very, very important. So all the theories that deal with how we see ourselves relative to our society, our peers, and this kind of things, especially the mattering, this context, feeling valued, you know, these are very big issues related to social media and social engagement in general. So what's the way forward? The issue of so social media, and college students needs more research and development interventions. From what I have seen, especially motivation is not well studied. So I think all of us that had the chance to go through this course, there, there are roles we can play. So uh, this can also be linked with training interventions, also connecting this to what I do for my nonprofit. I think there is a training proposed, uh, press 2005 in LATAM, uh, page 250, you could see. There is a clear way of training people so that they improve their, um, you know, uh, 
self management also so that they have a clear life goals so that they have a clear intentions about how they engage with their environment with their society with their uh, peers and uh, the social media environment this this is also related to social identity theory of motivation where young people see themselves as part of a group favorable or not favorable so social identity theory also helps in this context and we need to see how we use these theories to design a training and also to help uh, more evidences uh, yeah appear in the literature i see there is no much research because motivation i think can be spoken in different ways that's why i see uh, there are some papers that look like really motivation research, but they are not clearly mentioned by the researchers in relation to any of the motivation theories I'm presenting here. So social media skill training, specifically speaking, especially about what I plan to do as part of this PhD research, also as part of Yes Ethiopia. Social media skill training and research will be one major area I'll be focusing on as part of Yes Ethiopia and my leadership study here at UNL. So this is scoping, sorry, it's not scoring, it's a scoping review paper it will be published in an international journal and we'll also present it in national and international conferences. And uh, this is the uh, end of my, my um, summary of this class presentation. So thank you very much for your attention, your comments, suggestions, and questions, as well as potential collaboration are most welcome. Please reach out to me if you have ideas, projects, and if you are looking for partners, I'm very happy to talk to you. Uh, as you know, I'm uh, building a nonprofit, the Youth and Education Support Service Ethiopia, the yes Ethiopia that I showed you earlier. And I'm looking for partners. I'm looking for people to work with me. So let's work together. And again, I will thank uh, Dr. Suzanne very much. And if you'd like to be, maybe you might ask, where are the evidences? Where are the, uh, you know, where did I get all this <laughs> research and all these discussions from? Here, I'm trying to show you the scoping review document I'm working on. This will be submitted to, uh, uh, but submitted at the end of the uh, course. And we are also going to publish this. So I have a topic, what motivates college students in the USA to use social media? So this is a scoping review. And I have an abstract short summary. And I have introduction. You, have see, you can see we have keywords, introduction. And also I have the um, method section, how I did the scoping review. And we have key findings. And also, you see it's not done yet. I'm still working on it. So we have key foundings and also we have uh, like social media and how this related to the uh, leadership theories. So yeah, thank you very much for, I, I also have recommendations, not then and then what next and the list of references. So I, I just wanted to show you all the references which uh, I have been like reading. So these are list of references which I used for this review and for this presentation. So yeah, I have about kind of three or four pages of references because I didn't cite all of them. So I just wanted to show you where all these evidences came from. So I thank you very much. And uh, as I said, please feel free to uh, send me any questions, comments, and above all, please welcome to work with me. And uh, I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suzanne. And thank you to the classmates. And God bless you all.